Usually we think higher of the lead running backs from Ohio State, especially when their production has been solid. But Mike Weber doesn't seem to be generating a ton of buzz. We'll try to figure out why next on our 2019 NFL Draft Profile Series hosted by DynastyLeagueFootball.com. The NFL Draft Profile Series, NFL Prospects. Break it down, let's get it. People's pin in the gridiron scholar. Time to do it major. Let's see who run in the field. Let's analyze the data. Yeah, let's go. When you look at the profile, you'd think Mike Weber was being ranked higher across the board from NFL Draft evaluators. The school, the size, the production, the combine performance. Yet, despite all of those things adding up, and in a class lacking a consensus identity, Weber continues to go mostly unnoticed. John, what's the feeling you get from watching the former Buckeye? Andy, the more I watch Ohio State tape, it's starting to make me question Dwayne Haskins because he had so much freaking talent around him. And one of those players is Mike Weber. Hey, look, at coming out of high school, he was an incredibly talented back. His senior year, he had over 2,200 yards rushing and 29 touchdowns. He was a top 100 recruit coming out of Detroit. He originally committed to Michigan, but chose Ohio State. He registered in 2015, but in 2016, he exploded onto the Big Ten scene. He rushed for over 1,000 yards and scored nine touchdowns. For that incredible year, he was named Big Ten Thompson Randall L. Freshman of the Year, Freshman All-American, Second Team All-Big Ten Conference. Just absolutely tremendous. However, in 2017, he suffered a nagging hamstring injury, and he started slowly, and he shared time with J.K. Dobbins, another terrific explosive back in that Buckeye arsenal. Last year, he scampered for 954 yards and totaled six touchdowns in basically a timeshare for the Buckeyes. And with all of that talent on the roster, he decided that he was going to declare for the draft early. And Andy, I've had and read a lot of buzz about Mike Weber. People have reached out to me, say the Chicago Bears are interested in him. Some fans have asked me, do you think Chicago can grab him in the fourth round? So there is maybe from the NFL level some interest in him. And I think draft Knicks have got to open their eyes to how good of a player he can be. Hey, he has a 5.9 yards per carry average in his three seasons at Ohio State. He had 54 career receptions. I don't think people realize how prodigious he can be in the passing game. Also, at the 40-yard dash at the combine, he ran a 4.47. This is a young man who's 5'10", 211 pounds. He's a downhill runner with great vision. He's short and compact build with a quick burst. Like a lot of these Ohio State runners, he just sees it and he hits it. He's very good agility and can scamper through traffic. He remains upright through contact, and he breaks arm tackles. Very low center of gravity, good pass catcher, and his tricky running routes. He's just not an outlet passer or catches it in the flat. Possibly he could be the best pass blocker in this class. Perfect for a committee role in the NFL, and rumors circulating that the Bears are interested in Weber. I have a fourth-round grade. He could slip into the third round if a team falls in love with him, Andy, what do you think about this dynamic Buckeye? The best way for me to describe Mike Weaver would be that of a renaissance man, meaning he does a lot of things well, but not one thing great. The most troubling part for me with Weaver is that ever since winning Big Ten Freshman of the Year, he's regressed. Now, while his production has still been effective, he never truly became that elite every down back or even that bell cow for the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, he really excels in pass protection, identifying pressure, squaring his blocks, and really holding his line. Again, like you said, I'll reiterate, he may very well be the best in pass protection of all the running backs in this class. He's probably better than some of the offensive linemen in this class. He's that good. Now, I think this may be his singular best trait, and he's also shown very good hands as a receiver. And when you couple these two things together, he has a chance to be involved early on in his career on passing downs. Now, I don't think this is the common perception of what we think of Weber as a running back, but from what I see, it is where he can surprise and where he should be able to win at the next level. As a runner, he has speed and strength, but he runs a little stiff and lacking explosiveness for me. It adds up to a runner who won't create much for himself, but is certainly capable of running through lanes when presented with them. Overall, I'll bring it back to what I said about his pass protection. He'll hold the line. I don't see him as a player that will give you an advantage, but he will keep you at par and not sink the ship. When we look at quarterbacks and say he'd be good to come in and be your spot starter or short-term injury replacement for a few weeks, that's essentially how I view Weber at the running back position. I've come to hate making comps, But for me, the conversation for Weber has been all wrong. His upside at the next level would look much more like Pierre Thomas than that of an early down back. And if I presented those optics to you, would it make you like him anymore? 
Leave it in the comments below. Let us know what you think of Mike Weaver. Is he somebody you're hoping falls to you later on in fantasy drafts? If you're a Chicago Bears fan, are you in agreement with John? Would you like to pair him now that Jordan Howard's out of the backfield? Leave it in the comments below. Give us a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Check out John's written work on footballdiehards.com. Check out all the other articles and podcasts here on DynastyLeagueFootball.com. And go see expandtheboxscore.com, my newly launched website, where you can get every statistic for every D1 college football player. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed it.